Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We are going to be adding negative numbers today. We're going to be adding integers. An integer is just a fancy way of saying numbers that are both positive and negative. So we're going to be adding negatives to positives and positives to negatives and things like that. Um, and they're really quite a pain. But hopefully I can break it down so that it's not quite as much of a pain as we move forward. All right, so let's break it down. Negative 5 plus 7, if we were to show that on a number line, it would look like this. We start at negative 5 and then we add 7. When we add, we move right on the number line. So we would add 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That would bring us up to positive 2. Now, you can switch the order that you add numbers. So negative 5 plus positive 7 is the same as positive 7 plus negative 5, or in other words, 7 minus 5. So we can look at that on this number line as well that we would start at 7 and subtract 5, or in other words, move 5 places to the left. And we end up at the same place, positive 2. So we've shown that you can switch the order here. And for me, honestly, this is a lot easier. All right, remember when you switch the order of numbers, you have to keep the sign with the number. So if it's a negative 5, it has to keep that negative 5. And other than that, you'll be able to move things forward. All right, let's try it again. We've got negative 8 plus 7, and that we can switch around to being 7 minus 8. Let's look at this number line and see if it's the same. Sure looks like it. Starting at negative 8 and adding 7 seems to be the same as starting at 7 and subtracting 8. Both ways we end up with negative 1 as our answer. So the difference between 7 and 8 is negative 1. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. The larger number is negative, so we, our final answer is going to be negative. We can use the number line for all these cases, or you can look at it this way. You find the difference between these two numbers, and you keep the symbol from the larger number. So the difference between 8 and 7 is 1, and the symbol, or the sign, negative, because 8 is larger than 7. All right, one more thing with negative numbers, and this I guess could have come first, but I made it come second. When you have 2 plus negative 1, that's the same as saying 2 minus 1. It means exactly the same thing. If we're joining 2 and negative 1 together, we get 2 minus 1. So how would we write 4 plus negative 5? We would write 4 minus 5. 4 minus 5. And that's what we would do. It's really that simple. So when I work out problems, that's, you'll notice that I do that a lot. I get rid of these parentheses and just make it 4 minus 5 or 2 minus 1. Because again, I'm trying to make things simple. And I think that it's a lot more simple to say 2 minus 1 equals 1 than to say 2 plus negative 1 is equal to 1. It means the same thing, it's just written in a different way. So having said that, let's look at a couple questions that show us this basic idea. It's a little bit complicated, but that's OK. All right, so we have negative 25 plus 15, and we have 26 plus negative 4. We're going to use those two rules that we learned. This one here, we're going to switch the order so it becomes 15 minus 25. That gives us a negative 10. And 26 plus negative 4 is the same as saying 26 minus 4, which will give us 22. In both cases, we're just showing the examples of the things that we have talked about before and shown that they are true using a number line. All right, so let's look at this when you've got a variable. If I have a question like this, a plus b plus d, a is negative 2, b is negative 3, d is positive 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in negative 2 in for the value of a. So I have negative 2 plus b, which is negative 3, plus d, which is positive 4. Negative 2 plus negative 3 plus positive 4. I'm going to rewrite these. I don't need those parentheses there around negative 2. And plus negative 3 becomes just minus 3. Positive 4 means the same. So again, this step here, I think I've simplified it a little bit. 
so that I can join together the terms starting at the left and moving to the right. Negative 2 minus 3 more gives us negative 5 plus 4. Remember the rule with negative 5 plus 4, I can switch them around to being 4 minus 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, and now I've solved this equation. When we're dealing with inequalities, in other words, you're asked to place a symbol in here, less than, greater than, um, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, we're asked to put an inequality symbol in here. What we need to do is solve both sides of this inequality. So I'm going to start by doing everything that I've said before. Negative 16 plus negative 5, I'm going to get rid of those parentheses and make it negative 16 minus 5. I'm doing the same on this side of this inequality, 15 plus negative 25 becomes 15 minus 25. The other numbers remain out, 25 is 25, 10 is 10. Now I'm going to join together terms from left to right, negative 16 minus 5 is negative 21 plus 25. 15 minus 25 is negative 10. Again, the plus 10 stays out. Now I'm, in both cases, I end up with a negative number plus something. So I'm going to switch them around so that I've got 25 minus 21 and 10 minus 10. Now there are simple math problems that you can do pretty quickly. 25 minus 21 is 4, 10 minus 10 is 0, and I can easily identify that 4 is greater than 0. That's how we do this type of math problem. All right, we solve both sides of the inequality and then we'll substitute in the symbol, the inequality symbol that best fits. All right, a couple more questions. <laughs> Don't worry, we're getting there. A replacement set, remember we talked about replacement sets in a previous lesson, is a list of numbers that you can substitute in for your variable. So I'm going to start with my first number, 5, substitute it into my equation. So I have 5 plus negative 15 plus 5 equals 0. And I'm going to solve it to see if the left side of this equation is actually equal to the right side of the equation. 5 plus negative 15 becomes 5 minus 15. 5 minus 15 is negative 10. And then I can switch that around to being 5 minus 10. And 5 minus 10 is negative 5. Clearly not equal to 0. So I'm going to move on in my set to the next number, 10. I'm going to substitute 10 into this equation. As you can see with the replacement set, it may take a little bit of time, but fortunately I've prepared these slides, so this should be pretty quick. So I'm substituting in for the value of x, 10. 10 plus negative 15 is 10 minus 15 plus 5. Notice I just changed this plus negative 15 to being a neg minus 15. Now I'm going to join together these two terms. 10 minus 15 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 5 is the same thing. If I switch them around, I have 5 minus 5 equals 0, and that is true. So the solution for this set would be positive 10. Positive 10 is the solution from this replacement set. And the last question is about absolute values. An absolute value basically means whatever is inside of those symbols, these lines here and here, becomes positive. So if it's an, a positive number, it stays the same. The absolute value of positive 10 is positive 10. The absolute value of a negative number, like this negative 5, becomes positive 5. So this question, I've taken in one step, I got rid of the plus minus 6 and just make it minus 6, took the absolute value of negative 5 and made it positive 5. So in one step, I simplified this equation right down to being a simple math problem. 5 minus 6, negative 1. And that's how it works. Now, if, we, if you would like to see some more examples, this is a YouTube video that I made with about adding and subtracting negatives. It's a short video that shows both, and hopefully it'll be helpful for you as well. Hopefully this one was helpful for you. And that's it.